Welcome in. It is second week of, uh, I guess you could call it a podcast. You could call it just kind of a check-in as uh, the spring portion of the Ottawa University Braves football season continues. The Braves will take on Tabor on Saturday at Advent Health Field, and it's time now to talk with head coach Kent Kessinger about this matchup on Saturday. Coach, thank you for taking time out. You're welcome. Thanks, Bob, for having me. I, I, I couldn't do this without you. That is the that is the uh, the symbiotic relationship that we have with this podcast, I guess. Well, absolutely. And plus, it'd just be a bunch of dead air after asking questions. So, um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I have a tendency to fill it up maybe a little too long. No, no, that's all right. You know, I'm going to throw a question out there and then I'm going to go uh, step away for a second and then come back. It's all good. Yeah, it's like a commercial break. <laughs> Uh, the Braves coming off of a, a nice uh, victory over Sterling last weekend. It was a slow start in the first half, but uh, second half, the Braves exploded offensively and defensively. Uh, what what were the action? What were the differences uh, between the two halves? Well, offensively, we didn't turn the ball over. You know, we had three turnovers. Um, you know, basically thirty yard line inside. You know, some one of them was in the red zone, and two two what we consider what we call a high red zone with the turnovers. Which you know, the way that we were moving the ball and that sort of thing, one would have hoped that we would have came out with some kind of points out of it. But uh, we looked at those as being missed opportunities for touchdowns for us. And then the second half, we just we didn't turn the ball over, you know, we um, did a good job of uh, playing pitch and catch and, and the running backs ran really well. James, James reader, you could tell he knocked a lot of the dust off of, of um, you know, his game that he hasn't been able to play for a little over a year. And, uh, and so he was good and had a nice, real long, good, long run for us. And then, you know, defensively, we were just really solid. I think the whole game, um, you know, it, you know, we, we forced it, force a turnover, you know, really early or short field uh, and uh, have an opportunity in three plays and score offensively. And, and then defensively later, we, uh, we have a safety um, Colby. I think it was Colby Johnson that uh, tackled, you know, uh, sacked the quarterback in the end zone, you know, for a safety. So um, it was great to be able to see, you know, our defense play hard and get us, you know, not only points, uh, but then also really good field position for the offense. So hopefully we can continue to do that. I think a positive also out of that is the play of Bailey Shire. Some some mistakes definitely by the young man, but uh, all in all, um, his best day throwing the rock around for Ottawa University in that game against Sterling. Well, particularly the second half. I, I, you know, I think that he ended up with a fairly high percentage um, completion percentage, but you know, those two turnovers are the things that we have to eliminate. You know, you play a, a team that, uh, that you can't afford to turn the ball over and get it back to their offense. We're probably in a different, different situation, um, you know, than, than we were this last Saturday. So those are things that we have to clean up. And I think, you know, one of the great things that we were able to do is, um, you know, we dressed a lot of people and we played a lot of people this last weekend. And, and that is, that was one of something that I told you, um, you know, last week that I, it was our goal to be able to do is to come into the games this spring, you know, and regardless of the competition that we're playing, you know, whether it's something that maybe we get a handle on early or not, but we want to play as many guys and get as many gradable clips of film as we can. So we can prepare ourselves um, you know, for the future too, because that's a little bit what you have to do in the spring is you, generally spring is just set on all trying to get yourself better within your own team. And we want to do that and then compete on Saturdays. Jalen King being a defensive player of the week certainly was a, a big positive of the defensive side of the ball. Uh, but uh, I think also just some of the play by, uh, by the defense as a whole was uh, really encouraging uh, coming, uh, coming out of that game with Sterling. Yeah, I thought we did a really good job against the run, and we were really good on third down, um, if I remember correctly. I mean, I know offensively, when I looked at the stats, we had we had we had been very successful on third down, and then I look over right next to it, and you get to see our defensive stats on that, and and that's something you know that is always 
it all is always one of those things that I hate, you know, I hate third downs on offense and I hate them on defense too, because that's always those nerve wracking downs. I'd like to get the ball back to us and I'd like to be able to move it on the offensive side. So I thought we did a really good job with that. Um, and our defense put a lot of pressure on their quarterbacks and, and we're going to need to have to do that again this weekend. Now this game with Tabor this weekend, you're taking on a team that is a young squad, uh, when you take a look at the team as a whole, a lot of freshmen, sophomore on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Uh, and they've had their struggles, but uh, they, they did pick up a couple of wins uh, this year so far. Uh, what is it about this Tabor team though? Is, is it just trying to get everything meshed together just to, because of being young that, that have been the, the difficulties for them? Um, you know, I think that a little bit offensively here going to be in the spring is that they graduated Trey McGee. You know, he'd been a, he'd been a longtime player for them, you know, starter as a quarterback for them. He graduated at semester and, and decided to move on, um, you know, and get out into the real world. And so they're, they're kind of playing some guys that haven't, haven't had a ton of experience, but they're getting it now. So, I mean, they're going to be a good football team in the future when it comes to that. Um, but defensively, they've been really pretty, pretty solid. I mean, there were a couple big plays that they gave up in the Bethel game last week, but for the most part, you know, they held them to 30 some points um, and uh, made them work for everything that they, they did. And so defensively, they've, they've shown some, so shown some, you know, good stuff. Uh, the guys that, that are young in their, their defense have also played all fall. So it's, it's one of those things that I tell our, our kids is you're not a freshman anymore once you hit the spring semester, all right? You're past that, hopefully. Um, and these guys are the same thing. I'm looking at, at Tabor with their, their two deep, and I would say the same thing. Those guys that are maybe listed as freshmen, but they're really not freshmen. They're, they're guys that are playing in, in quote unquote, that second season of play right now. Two guys on the uh, Blue Jay defense that the Ottawa University Braves offense are going to have to keep an eye on. That's going to be Parker Folks, the six foot, 220 pound redshirt junior from Clay Center. Six sacks on the year for him. And then uh, on the linebacker side, you've got Zach Roth, who's a redshirt sophomore from Wichita. He has three sacks. So between those two, they have three quarters of this defense's sacks for the season. Yeah, I think that part of it is I think that um, the uh, Parker folks gets a few of those sacks because people pay quite a bit of attention to to the other kid. Um, and because he's really, you know, he only has three sacks on the year, but he's he's pretty salty coming off coming off the edge. They they it, one of the things that I've noticed about um, Tabor in the past is they, they want to get their pressure primarily from their forefront. And, you know, they've had some outstanding defensive ends over the years um, that have played for them and they've been able to do that. And so, so you got to really pay attention to that. Um, interestingly enough, they've played, you know, they're a four man front for most of the time. And except when they played Avalette, the very last game of the fall season, and um, and so it, I, I, we we've got an idea that we're probably going to get a four man front, but you know they played a little three man, uh, quite a bit of three man front against Davos. So I don't know if that was because of there was COVID issues or um, injuries or whatever that forced them into a three man front. But um, but we're going to have to prepare for both those things. So it's it's almost like going into the first game. You know you you got to throw the Bethel game out of the for us off for the offensive side of the ball. Um, because, you know, we don't get anything from watching Bethel's offense. And, uh, but the defense can, you know, be able to pick a couple things up. And those are the guys that, you know, uh, are been playing, you know, a little bit more consistently. So let's, uh, it, it'll be a big question. And I think that, that um, we'll have our hands, you know, full with these guys, particularly this weekend. I think a positive coming out of last weekend's game with Sterling for Ottawa University's offense is, is that the passing game uh, played well? I, I think going in uh, to the games, heading into the games that have already been played, I think the there were a lot of teams who felt like 
uh, the struggles at at the at a quarterback position really made this offense one dimensional at times. But mm. Bailey Bailey playing well last week, and then of course James Reader and Dalen Johnson playing well. Uh, it, it, it's now given a couple of dimensions to this offense that Tabor's going to have to pay attention to. Yeah, you know it's really nice is guys that were new in our system in the fall like uh, Jermaine Ziegler and, and Jaquez Snell. Those guys, um, those guys have a whole semester of, of playing underneath their belts right now. Um, you know, Colton Davis is is Colton Davis. He's he's solid football player. You know, one of our better, you know, interchangeable parts that we have on our offense. And so to have guys like Jermaine and Colton and Dylan Foos, and then Greg McMahon is playing really well at tight end. Um, Jaquez, you know, in our receiving core, Des Doles, who's played well, is pretty, pretty, pretty well um, within our receiving cores. Those, those guys, are nice. They got a lot of experience, and that helps our passing game because now, you now Bailey and and um, our other quarterbacks have had a chance to work with them for a, a period of time to get to know where they're where the receivers are going to be, get to kind of see those little nuances and get a feel for each other. Um, which has definitely helped our passing game. Um, but then we've added a couple new guys. Um, uh, Tory Butts has really played well for us as a receiver. Um, that, that was great uh, to be able to see him. So he's, he's a nice added dimension. And then, like you said, you know, it's nice to get James getting rolling again. And it might have been the best game that I've seen Dalen Johnson run the football for us. Um, he was fast. Um, he made definite cuts. He ran physically at times. Um, you know, it was, I think it's probably one of his most complete games. He caught the ball well out of backfield too, um, that, uh, that he's played since he's been here. So it's good to see those guys, you know, kind of step up and mature and, and which makes me excited for what they could be, what this team could be, particularly as we move forward and even into next fall. Tabor comes in. We, you, you mentioned the uh, the changing uh, of the guard, if you will, when it comes to uh, players on offense, especially a quarterback. Uh, Trent Quinn listed as the starter right now, a redshirt freshman from Mineral Wells, Texas. What have you seen from him uh, in the film and in, in Tabor films that uh, it, it, that you have to look out for? Well, I think they want to get him untracked a little bit more as a running quarterback. Um, yeah, you know, he throws the ball okay um, from what I've seen. And, and I haven't watched a, you know him in depth to be able to critique him as a quarterback. Um, but, you know, watching what we're practicing and, you know, looking at in practice with the quarterback, you know, power reads and some of the fly sweep stuff that they do and, and being able to build off of the run. Um, I think that uh, I think that that's what they're going to want to do with, with him, uh, you know, but I know that Mike, I've ta- I usually talk to Mike every week, Coach Gardner, because uh, we're bunks amongst the uh, Raiders uh, for the KCAC and, and we've been trying to keep track of things as the nation, you know, changes and progresses with these games. But, uh, you know, he's kind of under the same philosophy that we're using is he's going to try to play as many people as he can and build for the future. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they evolve their offense, you know, from week one to week two um, with, uh, with their quarterback, you know, right now. And, but, but I imagine that they'll probably try to get him to, to rely a little bit more on the run game like they used to do in the past with some of their quarterbacks and then, you know, put him on some movement plays and that sort of thing as, as, uh, um, as the game progresses to throw the football. Defensively for Ottawa University, one of the things that I would think that they're licking their lips at is uh, some of the struggles with this Tabor offense. Uh, just in the last four games, they've only managed uh, 41, po- uh, 41 points out of those four games, so just over 10 points a game. Uh, so th- this is an offense that has been struggling as of late. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, they played a really good team in Bethel, so that's that's something that you gotta you gotta take into account. Um, and then, you know, I just you you don't know what everybody went kind of went through in the fall. Uh, you know, did they have people in and out that that didn't help consistency? You know, just kind of like we did um, with with some things when it came to to having the same guys work together offensively. 
that that makes a big difference. Um, and like you said, they're young, and so they're still learning. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, obviously, we'll know a little bit more after we get done playing this game on Saturday on what 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 they look like. But I don't know if you can say they struggle because they're young or um, they played some really good football teams. Um, to, if that's a part of it too, or was the COVID part of it? Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of unknowns, especially this year. You, you can't just say, "Well, this guy was good, and so we were here." Um, now the transition, I do know that the transition with their quarterbacks and and Trey graduating, obviously, that um, that has to have a little bit of an effect on them right now to try to get some continuity going. But uh, this again. They started the same time we did in the beginning of February. They're looking at a month and a half or more, almost almost two months of practice time. Where can this defense find some success against this Tabor offense? Uh, as a whole, 22 sacks so far this year for, for the Braves defense, 10 interceptions, five forced fumbles. So they can force some turnovers, uh, but where are those op opportunities going to come from uh, with this game on Saturday against Tabor? Well, I think uh, it's just like with most teams, we got to make them one dimensional. And I think that with the, with the young quarterback um, that's still learning the system, I think that if you can take away the run game, really, you know, focus on taking that and, and put some pressure on him, you know, make him, make him be in long yardage situ situations, not, not short, not medium, you know, where, where there's pressure, but not as much pressure when you're sitting back at third and eight, and, you know, that sort of thing and have to, have to complete a deep out or complete something where you have to hold on the ball a little bit more. I think that that's something that if we can take advantage of that, put them in, in longer third down situations, can be able to pin our ears back a little bit, you know, defensively and put some pressure on them uh, with the different fronts that we're running with the, uh, the movements and the blitzes that we have. Um, I think that we can, we can cause that guy to, to have a, a hopefully have a pretty bad day. Um, just because you, you, we got so many different opportunities to bring different pressures and stuff. So we, we need to get in them. So we need to keep them backed up and not ahead of the chains. If we can do that, I think we'll have a lot of success defensively. To me, a key in this ball game is going to be not only a, a quick start, but also to maintain that momentum through the game. Uh, when you look back to last year's game against Tabor, uh, Braves found themselves outscored 22 to seven in that second quarter. And I think that's where you could find the difference in the ball game it was that second quarter. Uh, would you, what's it going for the Braves? What is it going to take for them to, to keep that strong start going and, and manage all the way through the rest of the game? Well, I, I mean, hopefully we learned something from this last week because, you know, we, we got a short field and we scored, um, and then we started missing opportunities. Uh, we had a couple penalties on defense that kind of kept some drives going for them that, you know, for Sterling that kind of kept them, kept them in it and sniffing it a little bit um, to where we could have probably put it away a little bit earlier had we taken advantage of the opportunities. So I think part of our thing is just, is we got, we can't turn the phone, turn the ball over. We need to protect the ball offensively. And then defensively, uh, you know, a couple a couple reasons that they got that Sterling got into some you know scoring opportunities for them is we just gave up a couple big plays that we shouldn't give up. You know, we got to make better plays on the ball. But those are things that hopefully, you know, I always tell you, uh, you know, you make your best improvements from your first week to your second week. Um, and this is our second week, our second second week of the uh, of the year. So, um, so. Hopefully we make a little bit more improvements going forward and, and then be able to build upon what we taught them in the fall, but, but do that. And I think hopefully that can keep us consistent. Offensively for the Braves, I, I'm imagining it, it's trying to keep that defense guessing and, and making sure that the running game and, and the passing game are successful and successful early. Yeah, and I think that well, I looked at our stats the other day. I was talking to Coach Mendez about it. We I think we ended up about 50-50, um, which, you know, for me, I like to throw the ball a little bit more. But, um, but we, you know, when you can be balanced like that, you know, 50-50 or, you know, 55-45, however you want to think about it, that's still pretty balanced. You know, you're not just dropping back and throwing it 70 times in a game. 
or you're running it 70 times in a game and you can't throw it. Um, I think that that is a key for us. And we do have to keep them on balance. We have to get the ball to our fast kids, you know, try to try to stretch them, you know, going east and west with the with our run game and to be able to, you know, to make those cuts and go north and south. And then, you know, formationally do things, get some, hit some, take some shots, you know, when it comes to the pass game. You know, those things that kind of guess, you know, go away from maybe some of our tendencies. Those are areas I think that if we can do that, you know, it's just going to show a, a much different offense to a lot of different people. Hey, and uh, yeah, before I, uh, I forget about it, I would be remiss to not throw some love towards the special teams. Uh, oh, because- my gosh. Yeah, they were fantastic this week. A long running joke during the the uh, Kent Kessinger show uh, during the football season where we we would take some shots, but what a what a great performance by the special teams last week and and not only that but then uh, with the using the backup punter for Auto University who came in and really hit some missiles down the field. Yeah, so the thing with Adam. You know, we we kind of were working to get him to be our first first punter this year, and and he and he was extremely you know extremely solid you know in the fall, um, you know balancing basketball and, and some of the other things you know that he was doing, but um, now that we've you know been able to have him full time out there, matter of fact, he he lined up the other day and he's, he was nailing, he was nailing 35 and 40 yard field goals for us. Um, kicks off, kicks the ball off. Well, you know, he's a, he's a really special kid. Um, but yeah, boy, he, he punted the bell ball. Well, you know, his, I think his average was under 40, but that first one was a missile. And then the other ones, they just pinned him deep, you know, um, and gave him long fields that they had to drive and shoot. I think, uh, then you look at the flip side of it. We blocked the first punt. We and we probably could have had a couple more, and that's the, one of the things that I told our guys going before before we knew that we were going to not be playing Bethany. I said, you know, one of the things that we need to hang our hat on in the spring is that I don't think people will pay as much attention to the special teams as we do, um, and that can be an advantage for us. Now, I don't know if I can say that this week because. Um, Coach Gardner being a guy that played special teams is probably going to focus a lot on the special teams. So, but it can be an area, it could be an area though, that again, we can make a big difference. And, and it was, it was really good for us. Covered well on kickoffs, you know, got after it on punt, punted the ball. Well, you know, it was, it was good. Well, coach, thank you for taking time out to speak with us leading into this ball game. And uh, we will, also, we'll talk Saturday morning uh, for our regular fireside chat leading into uh, into the ball game. So we'll make sure to break any uh, new information that comes between now and then. Yeah, great. Well, I appreciate it, Bob. Thanks for doing this. Well, not a problem at all. It's uh, happy to do so, and uh, we will, uh, as we mentioned, pregame show on Saturday. We'll start at noon. You'll hear it on twelve twenty and one hundred three point seven FM KOFO. KOFO.com. Uh, but the best thing to do is to go through, go either to YouTube and search for KOFO radio, or you can go to ottawabraves.com and get the audio and video that way. Uh, and uh, you can hear the broadcast with the kickoff at one o'clock. So coach, we'll talk to you on Saturday and uh, for everybody else, uh, we'll talk to you also on Saturday and uh, thanks for joining us.